Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome everyone. Today we will continue discussing on alpha abstraction and beta abstraction. We have seen alpha elimination and beta elimination and corresponding the reverse reaction. Today we will mainly focus on alpha abstraction and beta abstraction. As you know the products which we are going to get by this transformation are going to be exactly same to that of alpha elimination and beta elimination. But still there are fundamental differences that can that can distinguish these processes. Let us try to look at these in greater detail. So, the alpha abstraction. Alpha abstraction is mainly a process where you have your um, your metal alkyl species and this in this particular case you are going to get this you know, alpha position hydride okay, abstraction directly by something else it which is let us say attached to it, the metal center. Here there is no association of metal hydride as such there is no metal hydride intermediate bond formation. This is the alpha abstraction net result is giving you metal carbene species. If you just compare want to compare the alpha elimination this is very simply let us say you have a ligand metal complex and an alkyl intermediate of course these reactions are reversible in nature and at the end you end up getting ligand metal hydride species along with this carbene intermediate. So, if you compare these two reactions the first one versus the second one of course the product wise it looks similar right both of them forming a carbene intermediate but in this case there is no metal hydride bond formation over here in alpha elimination as you have seen there are uh, there there is the, this uh, metal hydride bond formation. In this particular case this one this alkyl group is acting as a base ok. So, this is the base over there and this is the reaction first uh, done by Schrock ok experimentally proven by Schrock we will uh, we'll in a moment we will see the see the difference uh, or see the more uh, exotic example of this category. So, what we have seen right now uh, alpha abstraction and alpha elimination are similar both of them are giving the exactly same compound so to speak the carbene compound, but mechanistically they are different. There is a very subtle difference between these two in the alpha abstraction case the metal alkyl intermediate that alkyl can be the base itself and can abstract the hydride alpha hydride directly without passing through a metal hydride intermediate. Whereas, for alpha elimination we have seen there is inevitable formation of a metal hydride intermediate, but once again both of them are forming or giving the exactly same compound that is the metal carbene intermediate. Let us try to take an example we have previously seen the many examples of alpha uh, alpha elimination. Now, let us try to look at closely one of the real life example of of this alpha abstraction reaction. So, this is an example by Strock and we will we'll discuss briefly about it. It is a tantalum complex let us try to look at this complex. Now, <coughs> we have this tantalum at the center and we, we do see one alkyl group, two alkyl group, three and four. Most interestingly you see there are at every alpha carbon center there is a hydrogen atom available, but at the beta center there is no CH bond available. Of course, it is a highly engineered molecule. It is an organometallic intermediate which is kind of designed or you know by default it came out to be the one which will not have any beta hydrogen. So, only hydrogen only hydride present over there is the alpha hydride ok. Now, if you try to look at it very carefully uh, the product we are going to get from this reaction 
is going to be a um, it, it is going to be a carbene intermediate where this tantalum intermediate undergo further reaction to give you the product ok. So, what we have seen, seen over here is very simply this uh, whole moiety is undergoing abstraction and giving you the carbene moiety. So, of course, the other product in this case you are going to get is is this one right and this hydride is going to be the one over here. Of course, you know um, most important thing once again is no beta hydrogen present right uh, that is no surprise. On the other hand, there, there could be another alternative mechanism that is alpha illumination. Before drawing that let us try to look at one more time carefully there is only alpha hydrogen present no beta hydrogen present at any of the of, of this alkyl group. Here one of the alkyl group is acting as a base abstracting the hydride from another alkyl group and this is the alpha hydride and we are getting this carbene intermediate. Alternate mechanism involve uh, the formation of as you can see you can one can imagine it can form this tantalum hydride and the start butyl intermediate right. So, everything else remains same from a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 member intermediate we can technically get a 7 member intermediate right. So, this 7 member intermediate ok if you try to look at this we are calling as alpha alpha abstraction this should be alpha elimination. So, these are the these are both of them are leading to the same product of course, next step would be as you can imagine the reductive elimination from here should give us the uh, same product. So, what we have seen so far in this example particular example is a uh, is a tantalum complex you know, penta coordinated complex having 4 different alkyl group without any beta CH bond we have only alpha CH bond it can give us alpha abstraction where one of the alkyl group can act as base to give metal carbene intermediate. On the other hand an alpha elimination mechanism can follow where a metal hydride species is, is forming in the process we are getting the carbene intermediate and then alkyl and hydride reductively eliminate to give you the same product as we are getting from alpha abstraction. Now, the query is the very simple question one should ask which one should favor, which one is likely in this let us say particular case. Of course, most of the cases you see the alpha reaction, alpha abstraction or elimination type of scenario. Most of the scenario we are going to get alpha elimination reaction, but there are special cases of course, this is one such case where I think alpha we will we'll see in a moment alpha abstraction is likely, but alpha elimination is not going to happen and why is that very simply if you try to look at that example one more time ok. Let us try to go back and try to look at the example one more time this is the one where we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, this tantalum is going to be tantalum 7 plus. Now, if you do the outer electron configuration for the tantalum you would know this is going to be 4F14 ok, 5D3 and 4S2. So, this is the outer electron configuration. Now, you can see only 5 electrons that means over here 5 plus, 5 plus is likely 7 plus is 7 plus for tantalum is a bad extremely bad process. So, it is not going to happen. So, you can say that reductive elimination should not should not be happening. So, this process should not be happening and therefore, this product formation can only be justified. The product formation what we see in this particular case can only be justified by alpha abstraction ok. Alpha elimination although one can draw but it is electronically not going to be favorable 
because it requires a tantalum 7 plus which is not feasible and uh, is uh, and is unlikely and therefore the alpha elimination and following reductive elimination subsequent reductive elimination will not be a feasible idea it is all the way going to be alpha abstraction that is direct abstraction direct mechanism no such metal hydride formation will be happening all right next of course we, we would like to discuss little bit more on on this topic and that is that is the beta abstraction which is quite related so what now we are going to see is how beta elimination and beta abstraction differs you have seen the difference between alpha abstraction and alpha elimination now we are going to see beta abstraction and beta elimination once again both of them will give exactly same product but mechanistically or you know in terms of electronic property wise of the metal complex electronic properties of the metal complex it will be different let us try to look at the beta abstraction there. So, beta abstraction now of course this is less common more common intermediate or more common pathway as you have learned is the beta elimination. So, this is a this process basically is a concerted process of course, again just like your alpha abstraction it is a cons uh, it is a it is a concerted process which accomplishes the same overall transformation that is what is most important to remember this gives you exactly same transformation overall as in beta hydride elimination. Okay. So, what we try to tell you is it is exactly the same process. Okay. Alpha beta abstraction is similar process compared to your that beta elimination, but mechanistically they are going to be different. I am sure you have uh, remembered the beta elimination process, we have discussed quite a lot about it and uh, with a lot of examples over there. Now, we will bring your um, you know main transformation one more time just to compare and contrast that beta elimination with beta abstraction. Okay. Let us first try to look at the beta abstraction reaction. So, what we are going to get in this case of beta abstraction simply is this is acting as a base. So, it will directly abstract the beta hydrogen and overall we are going to get let us say this intermediate and R H. If this one was undergoing let us say beta elimination, then we will get metal hydride intermediate along with let us say R and then olefin intermediate formation subsequent reductive elimination should give you this intermediate. So, as you see it is exactly similar for beta abstraction you do not have any metal hydride intermediate involved it is direct the base alkyl group one of the alkyl group or one of the moiety on the metal center directly abstracting the hydride from the beta position alpha beta beta position and giving you R H in the process this R and this H without any metal hydride bond formation whereas in, in case of beta elimination it is going to be metal hydride along with the metal alkyl intermediate present and then these two intermediate these two species will undergo reductive elimination to give you the same product. So, essentially what is important to understand is um, you know this is exactly the same process as you see the net outcome is the is the alkane formation along with the metal olefinic intermediate formation. So, both the beta hydride elimination and beta abstraction is exactly 
giving the same compound. Now, one must remember that this process differs very little, but then there are situations where only for example, beta abstraction is favorable. Once again, beta elimination is the most preferred pathway and most often let us say 99 percent cases or 95 percent cases you are going to get the beta elimination, but then there are situations where beta abstraction is the only pathway because beta elimination can be ruled out okay, or is unlikely to be happening. Okay. So, for example, if you look at if this intermediate is 18 electron species. Now, this for this to happen is 20 electron species, right. So, this perhaps will not happen if you are starting with an 18 electron species like this and then this is not going to happen. Therefore, uh, if you are getting this product, this is likely that you are going to get through or go through a beta abstraction intermediate, okay. Now, of course, to prove which one is likely or which one is happening particularly whether it is a elimination versus abstraction, it is not an easy experiment to do. It requires extremely good, extremely efficient synthetic design. It requires beautiful design of the organometallic intermediate so that beta abstraction is the only preferred pathway and beta elimination is disfavored completely. There are very few examples that exist of this category, but the first one we will discuss which is a classic by a, in its own right. Um, this is a zirconium complex. And CP2 zirconium complex along with the methyl group, okay. Now, you see. <coughs> this is alpha hydrogen is not present, this is the beta hydrogen. So, beta hydrogen is present. Of course, the product you are going to get let us say by beta abstraction as you can imagine the product formation, you can go about these two group and CH4 can go out and therefore, what you have is CP2 zirconium and this benzyne intermediate, right. So, this is benzyne complex this is benzyne complex. Now, most importantly one, one could think of of course, that uh, this zirconium should give you this intermediate okay, and where this benzyne can coordinate with this overall to give you finally, from there on we can give get the reductive elimination in the form of, of methane. So, this is going to be your uh, first step and then subsequently methane elimination overall you, you should get a CP2 zirconium and this intermediate which should then give you uh, then give you the final product which is nothing but these two products are exactly same. Now, if you look at there this is the one we are talking about is beta elimination reaction ok this is the one which is the beta elimination reaction. Now, if you look at this process, okay, both we have seen beta abstraction and beta elimination. The first one, the first arrow we were trying to draw is the beta abstraction where direct methane formation was going on. There is no metal hydride intermediate involved in this case. In the other pathway, we have beta elimination where where we have seen the metal hydride intermediate is forming and subsequently a reductive elimination is happening to give you the exactly same compound. Now, the major query in this case, the major thing one should look at for this case is beta elimination likely. If beta elimination is not likely to happen and the product formation is still there, Therefore, there is only one way to explain this observation and that is beta abstraction, okay. Let us try to go back one more time in with this with this example, where we, we do see that this zirconium. Now, if you look at this zirconium is a D0 center, okay, zirconium 4 plus, zirconium is 4 plus, 
that is d0 center. Now, as you know, this for this uh, this metal hydride formation uh, formation, you should have the d electron available to undergo such intermediate, right? So this this is this process is not likely to be happening, okay, at the center when you have a d0 metal present. Since it is a d0 present, d0 metal center having a metal hydride bond formation is not going to be feasible and therefore, what we can say in this case, particular case, this is a classic example of, of this beta abstraction reaction, not beta elimination. It is a d0 metal center, therefore, further metal hydride intermediate formation is not going to happen and therefore, we are going to get only beta abstraction. This is a uh, paper which is a classic in its own right. This is a science paper by Steve Buckwell's group in 1993 to 61, 1696. Okay. So, in this class what we have seen so far is it is it's a very subtle difference between alpha abstraction and alpha elimination. Similarly, very subtle difference between beta abstraction and beta elimination. Of course, the, these examples are highly engineered examples. Not in every case you will see alpha abstraction or beta abstraction. Only in rare cases, but that is that is most important to remember and understand. And therefore, knowing that beta abstraction and alpha abstraction are possible. Uh, is, is, is one of the most important thing in this in this field that although alpha elimination and beta elimination is likely or more often happen, but alpha abstraction and beta abstraction one should not and must not rule out. Therefore, one must be extremely careful before commenting on whether this is an abstraction or elimination. One must count the electron and judge the scenario and therefore, they must proceed with the formation of the product by a particular mechanism. Of course, it is always very difficult to prove a mechanism, but if we know the fundamentals of different pathways, I think we, we can have some educated guess about the mechanism supported with some experimental evidence. Okay, in the next class, we will be mainly discussing uh, the four centered reaction mechanism. So, we have seen show for different pathways for product formation. There are different few other pathways for fundamental pathways for product formation. In the next class, we will see four centered reaction mechanism or so called sigma bond metathesis. We will also see 2 plus 2 reactions, okay. so called those are very famous Nobel Prize winning reactions. So, we will see both sigma bond metathesis and 2 plus 2 reactions in the next class. Well, till then, you all of you keep reading and uh, keep make sure that you understand the subtle difference between these processes. These are fundamentals of organometallic chemistry and one should have a strong grasp of, of these principles before they want to write down any mechanism. And very simply once one can you know digest, one can feel this mechanism very efficiently writing organometallic intermediate is uh, or organometallic mechanism is, is not a big deal at all what one should the, but therefore one should not really uh, you know really uh, take it easy on on this fundamental understanding this should be one should be very careful uh, and very simple in understanding what is going on so that uh, for the next class we will we'll discuss the uh, four central mechanism as well as your 2 plus 2 reaction Okay, till then, see you later. Bye bye. Swayam Prabha, Digital India, Educated India.